afternoon, London. I know, I know it's a graveyard shift. Um, afternoon, London. Good afternoon. That's a lot better. Um, so, my name is Darren Britt. I am from South Africa. Uh, you might know me as the rugby team that play in green and gold against your uh, team in white. Um, in South Africa, yes, we do have telephones, we do have internet, we do have cars. Um, <laughs> And obviously, we have a lot of contact centers. So I work for a company called APSA. APSA is a wholly owned bank by Barclays PLC. Um, and I think Barclays have owned us for about three or four years now. And obviously, um, there are four major banks in South Africa, of which APSA is one of the big players or one of the biggest. It was a clear steer from our CE, Barclays, that we wanted to become the go-to bank of Africa. And just recently, the name was changed on the stock exchange from APSA to Bagel, Barclays Africa Group Limited. But we looked at Africa expansion as being one of the opportunities and challenges. We had to go into 11 countries, or going to 11 countries soon. But we were losing market share in the South African context. We're also being faced with new startups and unconventional banks. Things like fintech. How do we remain relevant in a market where we're being challenged by banks that are not, are not traditional banks? There are APIs, there are apps, and we are being challenged in all sorts of ways. And I was having a conversation earlier with somebody around going into Africa and how the mobile companies and how lots of non-banks are banking the unbanked. So the goal became clear for us. In the last couple of years, I head up the, the wholesale banking services for APSA. And that is basically any client that doesn't have a personal account. We deal with clients like Walmart. We deal with clients like Vodafone, global companies that are pushing up into Africa. So some really big players. There's a company called KPI Research, and they go out and they find out from our customers what they think of us. And in uh, specifically to the electronic banking channels, so this is where the bank is a platform for our customers to fetch money from their customers by using our systems. In 2012, 2013, from a call center perspective, availability, we were fourth in the market. From an administration point of view, in 2012, 2013, we were third. From a professional knowledge point of view of the service consultant to deal with a technical query from a customer, we were third. We started making some progress in 2013. I've been with the bank 14 years, predominantly in contact centers, in the retail market. And when I joined the corporate segment in 2013, I was faced with this, with this problem. So in the last 72 hours, and on my way here to London, I contacted my airline, who had messed up my ticket. Online, I found 21 phone numbers for British Airways. I phoned them nine times. Out of those nine times, I made four of those nine calls were made to contact centers in the UK. Needless to say, the, eight, the first eight people couldn't answer my query, couldn't tell me what I needed to do. I got through quickly, but I was frustrated by the fact that nobody could tell me how to fix my very simple problem. I called my bank to simply find out if I go to London, can I use my credit card, can I use my cards? I spoke to five different people and nobody could answer my question. I got through quickly. They were helpful, they were friendly, but nobody could give me an answer. I called the priority pass service company to find out my wife was traveling with me. Can she go with me into the lounge? Four people later, I think they said yes. They eventually said yes. I called my Wi-Fi data company, and I had a technical problem with my data. Again, I think I got through in about 45 minutes, and only by the third person could they resolve my problem. So we're moving into an era where getting through quickly doesn't matter but we are frustrated by the fact that nobody can solve our problems. 
And I don't know if anybody in this room enjoys phoning contact centers, and we all seem to work in that industry, but can I just see by a show of hands who enjoys phoning contact centers? Not surprising. Um, people don't want to phone. They want to go online. They want to go on apps. It's all about instant gratification. So we went and we set ourselves one goal. Because in contact centers, we call it key performance indicators, but we end up with 107, which is way too many to try and manage. And then, and then to try and balance it all out becomes a full-time job. So we really said, how are we going to build a world-class client service center and achieve number one for client satisfaction by 2015? This journey started for us 18 months ago. It started in about, Jan it started for me in January 2013, and then we started putting everything in place, and we really then launched the service in March 2014. And we gave ourselves till 2015, because you can no longer take 48 or 36 or 24 months to do a project. By the time you get to the end of that project, somebody's leapfrogged you into something better. So our challenge, we had 12 teams across the bank. So when we started investigating this for corporate clients, a client could phone up to 27 different phone numbers in the bank and several teams, about 12 different teams. We had loads of processes, lots of them really old. In many cases, no processes at all. Some of these systems I'm going to show you were commissioned about 20 years ago. So the information was impossible to find. 80% of the staff that work there today started in January 2014. So I just needed to hold on to that in the back of your mind. We gave ourselves 18 months to achieve this. Not 18 months from go live date, 18 months from making that statement or setting that goal. We, said we were in serious need of help and we were having many, many meetings and we were confusing progress and motion. We were busy fools. We were so busy, but we were making no progress whatsoever. So we had to take some drastic, drastic measures, and we obviously had to decide to stop meeting and start performing. So we asked ourselves, what is it going to take to be number one in our domestic market? Because you can't push up into Africa unless you've got your own house in order. Ease of getting through, I think, has become a basic expectation for anybody and everybody. So that, to me, is a ticket to the game. It's a qualifier. That's not going to make you great or better. Being helpful and friendly, well, we would expect that that's a basic need. I often walk into supermarkets in South Africa. You, has anybody ever been to South Africa in the room? I don't know what you think of service, but I think it's often atrocious. I often ask people behind counters, why do you do this job? Why are you here? You look so sad and so miserable. And if you don't love what you do, you can't do what you love. So e helpfulness and friendliness, yes, it's a cliche, but if you're speaking to somebody over a telephone and they're not really not interested or they're not connecting with you, you just give up. You put the phone down and you phone back and you hope you get to somebody that's maybe more, more friendly. Carrying out your instructions with speed and urgency has become a basic need. We are a society of instant gratification. If you go into your app, I can go into my app right now and I can move money around in South Africa instantly. Often when I get in a queue with my wife and then I see what's in her hands, I need to maybe move some money around before I get to the till. And I can. Minutes, seconds. And she's at Harrods at the moment, so if my phone goes off. Um, the ability to deal with a query. If I go back to my British Airways experience, I hope there's nobody from British Airways in the room. Maybe, maybe I hope there is. Um, wh why do I need to phone nine times just to change a date on an airline ticket? The agent said to me, it's going to cost you some more money. And I said, great, that's fine, I'll pay it. When I got to the end of that conversation, she said to me, it's not possible. I, I couldn't understand why she said to me, I must pay more, and then at the end she told me it's not possible. So that's going to start making us a leader accurately carrying out instructions. I don't know if, you, if anybody gives instructions to your bank, but in a banking environment, an environment we find ourselves in, is we are regulated by South African regulation, and because of Barclays, we, are, we have to also adhere to, to, to British or, or UK standards too. So we have probably 1,200 controls 
that, 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 are, that are embedded in our business, which adds to red tape, it adds to frustration, and it makes people see banking as a grudge purchase. And then obviously getting through to the person and hoping that that person is the person that's going to solve your problem and hopefully come back to you with a solution when they say they're going to come back to you. And I don't think that's too much to expect. So what were the building blocks? We started off, I inherited these bespoke broken teams and I think it added up to about 80 people. And today we have approximately 600 people. But when we went out to find these people, we, we, we didn't go out and look for people that had banking experience or APSA experience or any sort of experience. We, re we really changed our minds around the fact that let's go out and find people that have the right attitude, that have the right drive, that want to do this job and have a passion and for client service. The other important thing is creating the right culture and environment for those, for those, for those colleagues. Uh, regular engagement, walking the floor, not to, 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 to whip people, but really walking the floor to find out what are the things that they are struggling with, what are the things that are stopping them from helping us achieve this goal. We came up with a new model. We had so many phone numbers that we ourselves didn't know who to phone for what and couldn't explain to clients, and, and often people in behind those phone numbers didn't really understand why they existed in the first place. So we really sat back and we thought, we need to change the whole model, not from a, an inside out, but from outside in. We've put all the complexity back out there for the customer. We've put all the complexity out there and said, for this phone here and for their phone, email here, and then and, and, and clients didn't know where to go. And then we really said, it's quite simple. If it comes in, it's yours, you touch it, you own it, do it right first time, do it quickly, and make it easy for the customer. I was talking to somebody earlier today. Um, if you go out and you buy a motor car, which I know in London is not a big thing, but if you go and buy a motor car in South Africa um, and you fall in love with that motor car and then they, the, the uh, dealership would apply for finance at all four banks, I can almost guarantee you 95% of the time the purchaser will take, take the, the deal that comes back the quickest and has the least paperwork. And it's not, it's not all about the rate because you want to be able to get into that vehicle, you want to be able to drive it off the showroom floor. So how are we going to fill this void? How are we going to make this possible? How are we going to become accurate, accountable, ownership? How are we going to make it simple for customers to phone one number and whomever they got to, through to about whatever that person could deal with it and do that in the space of 18 months? And obviously the enabler for us was eGay. So we all packed our bags, we came over to the UK, we went down to Canary Wharf, and we had a look at what is Barclays doing, what, what have they done for the last six years, and we try to learn those lessons, and we try to understand what was enabling them to be number one in, in, in the UK context. We then obviously decided to, to contact Egan and bring them on board, and, and, and we are currently the only division within APSA making use of this, and it has sparked so much interest, because if you think of an organization of 44,000 people, there is probably... I don't know, easily 15,000 processes across the organization, saved all over the place, all in different swim lanes and different methodologies. So nobody can find any information anywhere. And if you go into our intranet and you Google it, you will find it, but you'll find 16 versions of the same thing. So what happened next? Nine months later, where I stand today, so from March till December. Obviously the place was under new management, so we, 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 we had to deal with baggage, we had to deal with people that didn't want to change, we had, we had to deal with people that had been in banking for 15 years and who were we to tell them? So the area was under new management. 27 contact points merged into two. Seven teams came together under electronic banking and seven teams came together under generic banking. So it was about merging these teams and taking out all the, all, all the overlaps and, and all the duplication. We had to relocate these offices 70 kilometers from where they previously were in the middle of Johannesburg. We had to move them up to, to Pretoria. So now you're dealing with a bunch of people that are negative and don't want to learn and they need to move. Needless to say, 
out of those 80, we lost about 40. So we were down to half of the experience we had just to add to the challenge. 80% of the staff are new. New in terms of new to banking. Never worked in a bank before, never worked in financial services, but a lot of them were what I call the iPad generation. You know, they, they're hungry for knowledge and they want to move fast and they're always on their iPhones, and, but they have the right attitude because they want to provide what they expect. Nobody had previous knowledge or skills. 525 processes were reduced to 250 processes because with a tool like eGain, if, regardless of which channel the query comes in, if it's moving across a value chain, if it's moving across teams, you don't have a map for this team and a map for that team, and then it falls through to some provider, and then it's, it splits up somewhere. With the use of eGain, you can, you can come in with any query, and you can cut across processes or across teams seamlessly, and the user, being the agent in this case, and the client, would know, would know no different. We have 12 legacies. These are channels, online channels, used by big corporates, used by small businesses, used by medium-sized businesses. Some of them are online, some of them are collecting systems, some of them are uh, debit order systems. And, and as, we, as, as a lot of South African corporates are being bought out by international players, international banking and, and a lot of stock and trade starts becoming becoming the everyday thing. So we simplified. We took those 27 numbers, and, we, and they'd, been in, they'd been in existence for anywhere between tw uh, 10 and 15 years. So now you're dealing with corporates, and now you have to tell them change. Clients don't like change, and some of the ladies that work in those uh, retailers in terms of, you know, who run the banking have been phoning that number for so many years and it's speaking to a specific individual. So I took out all those numbers. I created two new numbers. I took out all the IVR options because at some point we were six by four by 18 and even for me it was getting confusing and you couldn't find your way through it. Now I have an, a situation where if I phone that number I get a welcome message and I shoot through to an agent and that agent should be able to help me with anything. Any query, anything, across those 250 processes. So now we start talking about having the knowledge to deal with all those processes. Some of those processes you may deal with once in 12 months. By nature, because it's a channel, it's got a technical nature. It's got a, uh, it's got a lot of external factors, firewalls and securities of the customer. So then there's two new channels coming along called Barclays.net. That is new to APSA, and we are taking that out to the 11 countries in the next 11 months. So again, it's about building that knowledge, building that skill, and putting it into eGain so that it's retrievable. When I inherited all these teams, I had what I call single-man dependencies. Excuse me. I had people that had worked on some of these things for 15 years, and that either come to retirement or they decided not to move that 70 kilometers and they left. And I didn't know anything about this business at that stage. So there I was lying in bed, rolling, tossing, turning, making notes, thinking, how am I going to do this? Because the guy with the knowledge is leaving. I don't know what he used to do. I don't know how to replace him. And I can't teach the new guy what the old guy knew. So what did I do? I sat him down, siphoned all the information out of his head, and put it into eGain. And today I stand here, and I haven't had a single escalation of phone calls since I landed in this country, because I know everybody back home has got access to all the information. Everybody had to learn everything. You cannot force 250 processes into a person's head. It's not possible. And these things change regularly. So new regulations, new controls, product enhancements, new products new customer requirements. Corporates have a lot of customized requirements. So what do I do? Do I run interventions and training every other week? No. I publish that information on eGain real time. And we didn't run an 18-month project to take the 525 processes and consolidate them into 250. We broke it down into bite-sized chunks. And we started at one end, and incrementally we've changed it. Now, any one of my agents can walk up to the lady that looks after the eGain knowledge base, and, and, and they can populate changes, they can make changes, 
and they can start to get, they can start narrowing the variations on different processes to the exact process. So what made this possible for us? Obviously a partner like eGain. And I was invited here to tell you as a customer of eGain what success it meant for us. But I must tell you as an organization, they made it happen. They were flexible, they came out to see us, we drove them crazy for presentation after presentation and please explain. We struggled to get the infrastructure into the organization. You know, there's finances and there's all these things and time's running out. So I have to say as a partner, and going forward, we're now looking at the next, now that our house is in order, we're looking at the next big wave. I have to roll out services to 11 countries over the 11, next 11 months. Do I build more contact centers? Or do I leapfrog that? Do I go straight to online chat? When do I start pushing this information that I've established over the last 12 months, when do I start pushing it out there for the customer to see? If the customer signs onto any one of those 12 channels today, they do not have access to any information. They have to phone. So now, the agent is seeing the information and providing that to the customer, whether it be online, through email. Why not start pushing that out to the customer via the interface, via a link, because that's what customers want. They want to be able, to, a lot of these customers in the small business world, they do plumbing, electric, and whatever, working all day, then they get home at night, and then they want to start doing their banking. But let it be said that eGain, as brilliant as what it is, doesn't drop out of the sky, populated with the information you need for your organization. So somebody's got to sit there, first draw it on paper, sure it makes sense, try it out, test it, prototype it, with a lean and agile approach, and somebody's got to put it in, and then maintain it. Because if you don't maintain it, you might as well not bother. So we partnered up with a company called uh, IQ Business, South African consulting firm that specializes in training, delivery of training, um, also you know, just driving efficiencies out of the business. And through the, through the assistance of IQ and eGain, we successfully implemented eGain, we successfully consolidated 20 service, 27 services into two, we successfully moved to the point where our training for these new staff reduced from eight weeks to four weeks. So where they joined in the beginning of Jan, second week of February, they were ready to go live. They were ready to go on the phones with these 250 processes. Everybody had learned everything, and we had simplified the business for ourselves and for the customer. So on the 22nd of January, I received this. In a question of nine months, from 2013 to 2014, we went from last in the industry to first in the industry. <laughs> but let it be said, this is for call center availability. I did say that was a basic need. Um, when I took over these teams, I was looking at some of the MI. In 2013, there was a customer who held on for 59 minutes. That's loyalty. <laughs> so we launched, we launched in March, and we've managed to take it from last to first in that particular category. In the next category, I also want to say that when I saw this report in 2012, I just joined, there was a lot of information overload, I kind of forgot about this, and I always wondered how in those 18 months I was going to prove that we were number one in the industry, and just on the 22nd when my boss rang me up and said, I've just seen this report in a Steerco, it came back to me and he said, that must be the KPR report. So in through doing all of this, it was not to try and manipulate this. It was really what our goal was for ourselves. In 2014, our administration, who sets up the registrations, the amendments, the limits, the billing, professional knowledge of the administration staff, we went from third to first in this particular category in nine months. And I, and I want to stress the fact that it was not all the other KPIs, because we don't really, how do we measure the knowledge of the information in people's heads? This KPI company went out and did about 1,500 surveys and 500 face-to-face -face interviews. And this is what the customers are saying. 
from a call center point of view, we went from third place to first place in nine months. And from an overall support service delivery point of view, we went from third, a little bit of first, and then hit the mark on the head by a long margin in 2014. So we've, we've, we, as in APSA, have moved away from speed and, and measuring all these metrics that should just be a basic need. I was talking to uh, one of my staff and uh, this iPad generation, and she was saying to me that the, 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 the Maslow hierarchy is changing. Your biggest worry is going to be, do I have Wi-Fi connectivity? Is my battery going to last? Isn't it? So Kofi Annan said that knowledge is power, information is liberating, education is the premise of progress in every society and in every family. So I've got staff that have gone from 80 to 600. I have an attrition rate of less than 1%. I have massive interest from internally in the organization to come and work in the, in the environment we've created because we've made it easy for staff to work there. We've made it easy for customers to do business with us. We've taken the complexity out of the customer's life and put it back into our lives. And I just want to leave you with that. Ask your customers to be part of the solution and do not view them as part of the problem. I had the opportunity of having some direct engagements with companies like Woolworths, uh, ShopRite Checkers. These are the massive retailers in South Africa that are pushing up into Africa. And I can't tell you what an epiphany it was that the customer said, just fix that, or just fix that, or, or just fix a small thing, and we'll stay with you. And those were so simple to fix. Sometimes we overcomplicate it for ourselves. So the customer can help you drive the solution. Then you just need to store that solution. Thank you.